ждем. Когда Муж хотел подарить этой вашей жене, но так как ее нет, он просит подарить, чтобы вы подарили. Я тоже вам очень благодарен. Я хочу, сказать, я хочу сказать, что вот это ирисы, они растут на болотах Якутии. А это русские ромашки. Многие здесь среди нас аплодируют вам за ваше за вашу смелость. Мы очень счастливы, что вы сейчас можете здесь быть, и что вы свободны. Мы знаем, что вы несете большой, сделаете большой внос, вклад. Yes, I'll attempt to. I know it isn't easy to leave your homeland, and I know that you love your homeland. opportunity to talk with you about a most important subject of my upcoming meeting with General Secretary Gorbachev, human rights, and your interest in that. And with me, as you know, is Yuri Orlov and Mrs. Orlov. Yuri is a founding member of the independent Soviet Helsinki Monitoring Group, a man who has done more to inform the world of current Soviet human rights violations than any man on earth. As I said yesterday, a hero for our time. <clears throat> the West owes him a profound debt, both for his courage and fortitude under unspeakable conditions, and for reminding us how precious are the freedoms that we sometimes take for granted. As you all know, there has been much speculation that our upcoming meeting in Reykjavik will focus on arms control. But true peace requires respect for human rights and freedom, as well as arms control. We go to Iceland in pursuit of peace. But it's important that the world and our adversaries understand that we Americans, what we mean, when we speak of peace. Peace is not simply an absence of war. It's the presence of justice. And human rights, human freedom are its indispensable elements. <clears throat> These fundamental values and beliefs are matters in which we Americans cannot and will not compromise. So our agenda for the Reykjavik meeting will deal not only with arms reductions, but Soviet human rights violations, military intervention by the Soviets and their proxies in regional conflicts, and broadening contacts between our two peoples. This meeting is not to sign agreements, but to prepare the way for a productive summit. A real improvement in the 
Soviet Union's human rights record is essential for such a summit. We will not sacrifice fundamental principles or vital U.S. interests to get a summit. I'll make it amply clear to Mr. Gorbachev that unless there is real Soviet movement on human rights, we will not have the kind of political atmosphere necessary to make lasting progress on other issues. There is much room for improvement. The religious persecution, long divided families, suppression of immigration, and harassment of ethnic and cultural activities. We are realistic about the Soviet Union. We have no illusions about the difficulty of making progress on these key issues. But I see no alternative to our twin policy of strength and dialogue. And again, thank you all for, for being here. Mr. President, did Mr. Orloff tell you anything uh, significant uh, We have just had a few more, few minutes together before coming in here, and uh, we have said the things that I think you would expect us to say. Did he tell you what he would like you to tell Gorbachev? <laughs> no. He spoke of wanting to carry on the work that he was carrying on there, to continue to strive for freedom. And uh, his goals are very much those of the people around this table already. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. President. Thank you. Let's go. Please. Please. You're taking time for the meeting. Cameras go to your right. I'll put it. Few moments with me. All right. Thank you. Well, what they said. Yeah. Why don't we go in here? All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. You get behind when interpreters are involved. We just had the order of the whole meeting of the those leaders of the groups. I will be very direct. I look at my watch. I won't overstay my time. <laughs> when I spoke to you on the Saudi arms ceremonies that with you and the Vito, we mentioned Soviet joy. Yep. Soviets have consistently said most people have gotten out but want to get out. What I want to present to you is a list of about 1,200 names of Soviet Jews who want to get out. They're guilty of one crime, the same crime I was guilty of last week, going to a synagogue in Rosh Hashanah, the New Year, and teaching Hebrew in their homes and so on. They call them prisoners of conscience. And what I have, and here's some 10 years or more, what it is is a complete computerized readout, which I work with the Union of Councils for Soviet Jews. And just pick any page and you can just see. We have definite addresses. There's 400,000 Soviet Jews that want to get out. What I have here is definite. Everyone here, as of 30 days ago, was at this address and a complete rundown. The Soviets know who they are, so they cannot get into any problems with them. But when you go to the summit, perhaps if the time is propitious, here you have 1,200 names. It's just the beginning. It's certainly not the end product, but it's far better than anything that's happened up to now. And I have in here a letter from the council explaining, but basically it's completely computerized. Everything is in here. So when they say there are no Jews who want to leave, you say, here's 1,200. It's a start. I will refresh your memory. My mother was an immigrant from Russia. And in one generation.